Today, I'm gonna to talk about low heart rate training after 500 miles. Thirteen point five eight miles, ninety minutes, twenty six seconds per mile, one hundred and thirty seven beats per minute on average for the entire run today, which included a math test or a maximum aerobic function test. And with today's miles, that brings me to over five hundred miles of training using low heart rate training as my training method, specifically using Maffetone style low heart rate training. Now, before I go into my detailed thoughts into this style of training for a marathon, I do wanna go over some disclosures. This is a training plan and training style that uh, no one is paying me to do. No one's paying me to make this video. This is something that I've been curious about for a long time and been wanting to try. Uh, so no one else is involved in terms of why I'm training like this or making these videos. And um, no one's gonna get a chance to preview any of my thoughts uh, or any of this footage until this video goes up on YouTube. So a lot of you have been asking me in previous videos, I made, uh, I think an initial low heart rate training video and an update after 100 miles and after 250 miles. And it's a common question that I keep getting. And for me, the idea is uh, with low heart training is I wanna build endurance. Now, I, I typically, for those of you who've been around, you've heard me say lots of times that I don't consider myself a particularly gifted runner. But if I do have any gifts or any strengths, I, I, don't, I still don't wanna say that I'm gifted, but to the extent that I have strengths, I think one of my strengths is endurance. Uh, I think I'm pretty resilient, and I think I have the ability to run multiple long days back to back and run long running streaks. Uh, that's just has been my very, I think, on paper, underwhelming strength. And the idea with low heart training is, what if I've only scratched the surface in terms of that strength? What happens if I really focus in on that strength and make my strengths my strengths? Uh, I've talked about in previous videos about making my weaknesses my strengths, uh, and that's important too. But I think before you get there, I think you need to make your strengths your strengths. And so that's the idea with taking the endurance strength that I have and really building on it and we're gonna do that through low heart rate training. So why, why does that even work? Well, I think that the kind of the best kind of, a lot of people critique Maffetone or low heart rate training in general, especially, especially low heart rate training this low, um, by saying it doesn't make sense. It's very slow running. At first it was incredibly slow running, frustratingly slow, maddeningly slow running. And people look at that, they try it for a week or two and say there's no way that po can possibly work. Now I'm not gonna say that it works, I'm still only 500 miles into it. It's been since late October that I've been running this way. But in terms of concepts, let me ask you this. If I wanna run a three hour marathon, which is my ultimate goal, I don't know that I'll get there for my next marathon or even in 2020, maybe by the end of 2020, hopefully is what I'm thinking about. But let's say I wanna run a three hour marathon. If running slow doesn't make sense and you're worried about neuromuscular conditioning, just the body not being used to running fast. And there's lots of research out there saying that one of the key components of endurance in, in terms of mental, physical connection is perceived pace. If the perceived, if the marathon effort feels like it's too hard mentally, even if you physically are capable of doing it, you are more likely to hit the wall and to bonk before you reach that finish line because that perceived effort, your mind is telling your body hey, this feels too hard, there's no way we can keep it up, let's dial it back. And it may be even subconscious, you might not even be realizing that your mind is kind of throttling your body without you even realizing it. So there's lots of arguments for why 
all or predominantly all low heart rate training, slow running is bad. But on the converse side, all right, let's work on that then. Let's, how about if I wanna run a three hour marathon, let's just run six, hour, six minute 51 pace, all miles every day, or at least every day that I'm running. Let's take recovery miles out of it, let's just rest. And let's just run marathon pace miles, all my miles. I can use the Tanda race predictor and figure out what's the number of miles that I need to run at six minutes, 51 seconds per mile pace and just run that. It's not that many miles compared to what I'm running now, which has been about 80 miles per week. I think most of you would agree that that's not a great recipe for success to run race pace miles and only race pace miles. And on the other side of it, I think a lot of you are at least aware of the idea, if not proponents of the idea that run easy days easy. I think a lot of you will also say though, run easy days easy so you can run your hard days hard. We're putting a premium on those hard days or those faster days, the quality workouts as we call them. And, but I will say that what if the easy days are not the means to an end, a, a way of getting you some extra mileage plus the ability to be fresh for your hard days, what if they're not the means to an end, but what if the easy days are the workout in and of themselves, right? So the way I think of it is we're all comfortable with the concept of fast twitch muscles and slow twitch muscles. I have been uh, not blessed with an abundance of fast twitch muscles. I just don't have top end speed. That's not me. No matter how much I work on it, I'm never going to become a 200 meter sprinter. I don't necessarily think that I'm blessed with a lot of slow twitch muscles, but of the muscles that I have, if I don't have a lot of fast twitch, I must therefore have a lot of slow twitch muscles. So how do I strengthen my slow twitch muscles? How do I make them strong? How do I make them have great endurance? The answer I think is through low heart rate training. And one of the things that I'd been, I think incorrectly believing is that if I just keep my heart rate low. For example, the 180 minus your age, plus or minus five, depending on a couple of factors, is the Maffetone formula. It's very simple. It's sometimes for a lot of people, maddeningly oversimple. But let's just say that. If I'm in the weight room and I'm lifting weights, uh, I could do that all day and never hit that range, from which for me is about 140. But as I've been reading more and more of Maffetone's book, he says that uh, we should avoid lifting weights, at least in the beginning phases of Maffetone training, which I hadn't been doing. I'd been kind of doing that part wrong. I don't know that it's necessarily wrong, but I had been doing uh, lifting weights for legs. And the reason why he says to avoid it is because it uh, incorporates your fast twitch muscles, even at slow paces, even at low heart rate, it's incorporating your fast twitch muscles. And the way that Maffetone explains the slow twitch, fast twitch kind of like uh, distinction in your muscles is that um, in terms of development in your leg muscles, uh, each system is very jealous. And if you're using one, uh, it's sometimes at the uh, detriment of the other. And so if you want to work on those slow twitch muscles, you can't really work on your fast twitch muscles, which doesn't always make sense to me. But... Uh, the idea is that you want to work, at least in the beginning, on your slow twitch muscles. So the slow running really does two things. Everyone focuses on the respiratory part. And uh, running slow helps your circulatory system, helps your heart, makes your heart more efficient, makes your heart more powerful. I think the other part of that is by strengthening those slow twitch muscles. So that's what I've been going for. And so uh, at the 250 mile update video, I said I was going to call an audible and start incorporating some speed work earlier than I had originally laid out in my Houston Marathon training plan that I had made back in late October. But as I thought about that potential change in plan, I reevaluated and I basically, and I didn't tell you guys about it. Yeah, I mentioned it to some people in comments that I'm calling a double audible. So instead of incorporating speed work sooner, I thought Maffetone style training needed more of a effort more of a commitment. And so not only did I not run some of the fast paced miles that I said I was gonna change and start adding in early, and I also uh, over the past week have not included the faster paced miles that I was originally planning on. And I also didn't do leg lifts this week. 
And so uh, that way, at least this week and for uh, about half of a week after the last leg day, which would have been almost two weeks ago, uh, I've only been doing low heart rate training and that's the only focus that I've had. And I think that that is coinciding nicely with the amount of time it takes for the body to respond to different physical stimuli. And so this last week I've seen a marked improvement in terms of how I'm feeling, how uh, much of an effort, the amount of mileage, which has been the most mileage I've ever run, has been taking a toll or not taking a toll on my body. And things feel good. I feel good. I don't feel fast, of course, but I feel faster than I have been. And ultimately that brings me to the MAF test. Now the MAF, M-A-F uh, test is basically you warm up for a little bit and I ran to the track that's near uh, where I live. And uh, then you do five miles at your target heart rate, which for me was 145 beats per minute. And uh, you do it five miles on a track, which is pretty boring. Uh, but the idea is that way you're running at like your, that transition point between aerobic, or in my mind, slow twitch muscles and anaerobic and fast twitch muscles workout. So you're right, working right on that razor's edge. And today, uh, where I was is uh, I figured out a couple of things. One is that I can't keep track, I can't count to four when I'm running on a track. So the first mile came in about nine minutes, 10 seconds per mile. The second mile, I didn't hit my uh, manual lap until uh, five laps, so I ran a mile and a quarter. And then I tried to say, okay, well the next time I'll just count three laps and then I'll average the two. Uh, but then I hit the lap timer at two laps because I can't count to three either. And so then I added another lap and so I've, uh, the next miles two and three on average, I think are about uh, 845 per mile and not per mile, it's per 1600 meters, just shy of a mile. And then mile four and mile five are in the 830s. And so my results are a little bit weird. Most Maffetone tests from what I've seen, and I've, this was the first one I've done, it says that uh, you should be getting slower and slower because you're at that edge. You basically, you're working at a physical exertion limit not overall physical exertion, but aerobic exertion limit. And so each time you should be going slower and slower. And so I don't know if I messed it up or what. I looked at kind of the heart rate tracing, the way that Polar does it, I set one of my zones as my MAF range, 135 to 145. And it'll tell you how much percentage or how much time you spent outside of those ranges. And so for the about 45, minutes that it or 42 and a half or so minutes that it took me to do this five miles it said that i spent 14 minutes uh above that range so about a third of the time now i think i also did run both before and i had about a five or six mile cool down afterwards a little long but i wanted my miles for the week so about six miles afterwards and there was a point or two in there where i was a little bit high so about 14 minutes i spent during the math test i think i'd estimate out of the 42 or so minutes. So about a third of the time I spent a little bit hot. I did spend a little bit of time cold, like underneath the 145, maybe in like the 140s. Uh, it was really windy on this particular day and I had a hard time kind of figuring out the pacing uh, when I had the wind to my back, how hard do I need to push? And then when I have the wind against me, how much do I have to back off? So I was having a lot of time figuring that out. Um, so I wasn't at like one, running at like a specific number is really hard. It's very easy, like the same pace in my mind can give me a 140 to a 145. Lately, I've been trying to run all my runs at 140. So that way, if I do get a little bit hot, I'm still within my good range. If I get a little bit cold, I'm at 135 or even 130, I'm okay with that. So I spent a little time hot, so that could account for why the number paces got faster, which they shouldn't have. The other conclusion that I'm, toying around with is that my math number is not right for me. And so they say that's another reason why you do these periodic tests. So that way you can take that very simplistic formula, the one that everyone complains about, and tweak it and see if it makes sense to you. So I don't know if I need to tweak that number or not. Um, but that's where I am. I never ran a math test at the beginning of this process because at the beginning of this process, I wanted to run all my runs at 145, so everyone was a math run was a math test. And I'll show you guys a tracing from a run earlier on, the first week uh, that I ran this low heart rate style of running. And from that week, uh, there was a lot of uh, 
error, I was repositioning the sensor. I think at that point I was using the conductive gel. Maybe I, I think I was at that point. After the warm up of about 15 to 20 minutes, you could see that I was pretty squarely within the range. And for those miles, I was in uh, around nine minutes per mile. So uh, pretty solid that day, uh, running about nine minutes per mile for more than five miles, but the pace stayed about the same the entire time. So if we're gonna use that as, uh, I think that's probably one of the better ones uh, of the runs. A lot of the other runs are a lot slower. Um, but if we take that kind of first week and compare that to this week's math test after about 500 miles from that point, uh, we see a bit of an improvement from about nine minutes to about eight and a half, eight forties, uh, for my math progress. So, uh, not as much progress as I was hoping for at this point. Uh, but progress, I think, I think it's big enough of a difference. I feel different enough that it, I think that it's, uh, a legitimate result it's too small to say whether it's statistically significant or really an improvement or not. I feel like I've improved. I feel like my endurance in that regard is getting stronger. I feel like there was a dip. In the beginning, I was relatively fresh. I was coming off a marathon, but still relatively fresh. Since then, I've been running a lot of miles, 80 mile weeks, my first 80 mile weeks ever. And that's last week was my fourth consecutive 80 mile week. Um, and now like I'm recovering from that. Also like stopping the leg lifting, I think also helps with that. But I feel like I'm getting stronger again, coming out from that dip. Um, so feeling good. So now what do I want to do going forward? Uh, I can't just do pure Maffetone style training from here on out. I have a marathon coming up, I think in about six weeks. And so it means I have about four more weeks of hard work left before I start the taper. And so I think I'm going to go back to what I kind of had originally written out in my marathon training plan. Uh, I'll be getting in some faster paced miles. I'm going to be using a polarized approach. Uh, similar to how the plan was already written. I'm going to be shooting for about 90%, 10%. So 90% of the mileage at low heart rate, Maffetone style running, 10% at faster rates, mostly marathon and half marathon pace miles for that 10%. So about seven or eight miles per week uh, running faster. So hopefully by doing that, I'll uh, kind of reactivate those fast twitch muscles, get the muscles reduced to running faster again, uh, but still getting benefit from those faster days and also the bulk that 90% uh, at the slower days as well. So that's what I'm thinking going forward. I'm not sure yet whether I'm gonna bring the leg day back if I'm gonna go back to the gym for the rest of this training cycle. If I had more time to do things differently, there's lots that I would do differently, but I've got a marathon coming up. And then right after that, I'll be getting ready to turn right over again into Boston Marathon training mode. So probably not the most prudent thing to do. Obviously, very obviously, I'm not coached by anyone. That's kind of what I've chosen to do. So we'll see how that goes. So that, I just want to give you guys a status update as to where things are, where I'm going from now uh, 500 miles into Mapitone and to what it's going to look like in the future. Now, the one thing that I will say is now a lot of you guys are going to say aha he's incorporating speed work that's not 180 minus 40 or 180 minus your age that must mean he's giving up on this but i will also say that whatever your other training plan regime is polarized moderate day all day uh run a bunch of miles uh which is how i used to kind of approach things um when you guys got to a month out from your marathon, things changed. You tweaked it and you focused on certain things as you got close to that race day, that goal race day. That didn't mean that the things you were doing before were incorrect or scientifically disproven or invalid. It just meant that when you were base building, you were doing one thing. And then as you got close to your race, you did some very specific things to gear yourself and prepare yourself for that day. I think that's what I'm doing here. And I don't think that's necessarily inconsistent with Maffetone style or low heart rate style racing at all. I think that a lot of people who are out there, and there's a whole bunch that are using low heart rate training, that when they get close to a race, they switch it up a little bit to focus a little bit on that race day, while the bulk, 90% or more, is at that low heart rate training. The other thing that I'll mention, because you guys have been very uh, adeptly discussing with each other in the comments uh, and on Instagram and to an extent on Twitter, uh, 
the benefits or like the the legitimacy of low heart rate training. And a lot of times you guys are like, well, some of you are saying like, show me an elite who trains this way. And if you're using kind of the Matt Fitzgerald 80-20 approach and kind of like reverse engineering what their training plan must be based on some of the times that they post stuff on Strava or whatever, I would say that probably a lot of people actually are in this, maybe not a lot, but there are probably elites that are doing this. The other thing that I will say is um, about that, and some of you, and some of the Maffetone people will say like, well, look at Tim Allen, and then some of you will respond, if Tim Allen's all you got, then it's not for real because he ran like 30 years ago or whatever. It's generally the gist of what I've been seeing a lot in the comments. I will say, one, I don't necessarily care what elites do. I think elites are hardworking, don't get me wrong, but they are built differently than I am. Their fast twitch muscles, slow twitch muscles, they're different. Their endurance circulatory systems are different than mine. I will never be elite. There's a big difference, no matter how hard I work. Even if I trained like an elite, I would never be elite. I think that's the difference in terms of my physical limitations, uh, of my genetics, of uh, my epigenetics, uh, of my lifestyle from birth till now. That's the difference, I'll never get there. So in a sense, I don't care what elites do. What I do care about is the kind of disadvantage that kind of like mo pro maffetone people have is the people that this benefits most aren't famous. You've never heard of them. I could drop their name and you would have no idea, but you know who they are? They're average people, below average people who are running way beyond their means. People who by no accounts should be running sub three marathons and are killing three hour marathons. And they're just running 250, 245s, just doing amazing things. That's the plan, that's the main thing that draws my attention. I'm the average guy. I just turned 40 a little while ago. I'm an old dude now. I still wanna run fast. And I'm trying to figure out, I'm not saying that this is a math method for old dudes, but I'm trying to unlock and maybe in my age I'm willing to, although I complain a lot about it, take the humility hit or take the humility medicine or whatever you, however you're gonna put it, and run slower in order that I can run fast, not the slow, run slow, so that, I, not, not the means to an end thing, but using this as a way of building that different system that will ultimately lead to, for my level of running, my natural abilities plus my ability to work hard, um, maximize my strengths. And so we'll still work on some of our weaknesses, leg strength, uh, hill work, not yet. I'm not ready for that yet. Um, but for now, I still need to build a lot more base. So that's kind of the ultimate way that I'd kind of probably wrap up the discussion for now. I'm going to keep going. I'll post more updates as I go. Uh, I have no idea what's going to happen in Houston. I have no idea what I'm going to shoot for even. Uh, at this point, I'm just going to take it as, all right, well, let's see where I'm at using this for a couple of months. And who knows what that's going to be. So thank you everyone so much for following along writing in comments, writing in very thoughtful questions, thoughtful responses on each side of, is this legit or not? Uh, which is kind of what it's come down to. Uh, and I appreciate that I'm reading all the comments. I do read them all. I hopefully I'm responding to all of them, at least the first one. I can't always, if there's a multiple exchanges, I can't always keep tabs on that. One, because the way that YouTube sorts comments for me as a the creator, um, it doesn't, uh, there's not an easy way to do that. It's easy for me to find like, first comments, comments that haven't been responded to at all. Anyway, that's what I got. Uh, hopefully uh, I've gotten to all of you. If you have any more questions about it or wanna talk about it more, put it in the comments. I'd love to talk to you guys about it more down there. Before I go, uh, I do wanna talk about our charity runner for this week. This week it's Sam Ward, who recently participated in the Memphis Marathon weekend, this last weekend, raising money for St. Jude. I was very happy to donate $70 to Sam's fundraising efforts. And I'll post a link in the description in case you'd like to learn more. That's all I have for today, everybody. Thanks so much for making it all the way to the end of the video, and I will see you tomorrow. Yo, what's going on?